to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. Today on the show, I have Jill Zarin with me. You probably already know Jill Zarin as a veteran of the Real Housewives of New York, but there's more to Jill than that. Jill is an experienced businesswoman who has been part of the interior design industry for decades as part of Zarin Fabrics located here in New York City. Now Jill has a new collaboration with Unique Looms, one of the most plentiful sources of handmade and power loom rugs in the world. Jill has designed a line of area rugs with them. On the show today, Jill describes the line, the downtown line, which has nine patterns in it, and the uptown line, which has seven patterns in it. We also get a very special treat as Jill takes us on a tour through her New York City apartment, and we get to see some of the rugs in her line that she has right in her studio. Now, the thing in the conversation is to listen for some of the business tips that Jill shares with us. One of them is that we actually compare notes on how the two of us have been in business for several decades don't want to mention, but, um, and we talk about the change in business and how it's important to adapt and to grow and to not get stuck in the way you used to do things and to be open to new ways of doing things. So take a listen for that part of the interview. And then the other thing is that Jill talks about a hindsight lesson that she has, that she describes a part in their business when they did not stick to their company mission and how it cost them tens of thousands of dollars. So listen in for that. And then finally, Jill talks about how she would like to see her stepson, who is now running Zarin Fabrics, make some changes that will, in her opinion, attract their ideal client to them more efficiently. So listen for these three things in the conversation. Listen, the conversation is fun. Jill is a ball of, I mean, she's just, she's, 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 she's hysterical. She's just fun and she's witty and she's just down to earth in real life. But there were at least these three definite business tips for us to take advantage of and to think about and to contemplate how we might apply them to our businesses. Okay. So now one thing I want to just say, it was, there was a storm brewing here in New York and New Jersey on recording day. So the internet was not our friend that day. Um, and in fact, at the end of the interview, it literally just cut out. And we were just about done, but we were talking about the charity event that Jill hosts every year in the Hamptons. And so if you want more information on the charity event, please go over to jillzarin.com. I'm sure information as it's ready will be posted there. And then also to keep up with Jill and what she's doing, you can find Jill on Instagram at Mrs. Jill Zarin. All right. Now, reminder that our podcast is sponsored by Kravit Inc., where as an interior designer for any one purchase, you can get 10% off any Kravit fabric, trim, or wallpaper. At checkout, use the code AWDB10. We are also sponsored by My Doma Studio, which is a platform for you as an interior designer to professionally run and manage your projects. You can find My Doma Studio at mydomastudio.com slash a well-designed business. And lastly, we have Camp Chroma. Camp Chroma is an online, on-demand 
course where you can learn the science of color. This is a place where you can learn to confidently specify color and understand it so that your interior design projects run more efficiently for you. You can find Camp Chroma at campchroma.com. All right. I'm really looking forward to sharing Jill Zarin with you. She was a ton of fun. I hope you enjoy it too. Hey, Jill, thank you so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. Well, thank you so much for having me, the number uh-huh. one podcast in design. Are you kidding? <laughs> what an opportunity. I have to tell you, I, we have just been chatting off air a little bit, and it's really been such a nice time getting to know you. And I'm looking forward to sharing some of the stories you just shared with me, with everybody listening. Thank so, you. yeah. So the thing is, there's a couple of things we're going to cover in this interview together. Um, we're, of course, going to talk about the rug line that you have just recently launched with Unique Loom. Um, we're going to talk about your luxury ladies lunch in the Hamptons that you do for charity every year. Um, you have said that you're going to give us a little tour of your apartment there in New York City, that DXV, and you've got some pieces from DXV for your faucets and so forth, and all your rugs are there. So, um, But I want to just start because I'm sure that every single person that knows you and saw your name on the title in my queue today is thinking about you and your recent loss of Bobby. And so I just want to really share with you that um, it was... I don't, I don't even know you and um, reading about you and, and reading about all of the things that you went through. And I really could see what I really did notice and could pick up um, was the love and the respect that you seem really seemed to have a really terrific marriage. We did. We did. I yeah. loved him so much and he loved me so much. I was yeah. very, very lucky. I yeah. really, you know, lightning struck for me, it struck like in a way twice. I mean, I loved my first husband in a different way and it didn't uh-huh. work out, but we're still really, really close friends and we never That's had a problem nice. getting divorced. You know, I always say you should pick someone, you should marry someone you wouldn't mind being divorced from. <laughs> it may sound a little weird, but, but it's but actually it true when you think about it, right? Right. If you're, if you're marrying a hothead, uh, you might want to think twice. <laughs> you might want to think twice. Yeah, well, especially I, if he's had a bad divorce. That's yeah, not a good thing. Yeah. But Bobby was, beyond the best and um you know i think a billy joel song only the good die young and you know 71 was young yeah yeah i was i was sharing with you that there's so many little correlations in our lives your yours and mine my husband is 70 i'm 55 so you're a little younger you know what i mean um but um but then also you know we've been in the window covering business and the fabric business for 36 years and here bobby is obviously clearly this the third generation he was the third generation of zarin second oh second second. his son is the third okay carrying the torch okay that's great and it's so funny because because uh, I remember being new in the window treatment industry back in the early 80s. And one of the things was, I re- never forget the first time a client like schooled me because they were saying something about getting fabrics and this and that and the other thing. And where did I get my fabrics from? And of course, I'm telling you, we were in business a minute and a half. And I was like, I don't even know where I get my fabrics from, right? And she was like, well, I mean, don't you go to Zarin in New York City? <laughs> and I was like... Well, of course I do. And then I'm like, what the heck is Zara? You know what I mean? But you know, I went loyal, in as a remarkable a loyal, business. Loyal, 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 loyal customers. I mean, 1936, and we don't yeah. advertise. No, we used I, to. In right. the yellow pages. I remember when I first met Bobby, he used to have a dollar. <laughs> he told me it was a dollar size ad. And I think it cost like 30000 a year, which was a lot of money. By I me. know. I know. And, one, and I remember the yellow pages guy coming into the store to sell the ad. I know. Are you going to take out a dollar? Are you going to take out a credit card? I mean, the whole credit card size or business card size, the whole thing. Yeah. And then think about that. Then Google came in slowly, kind of crept in. Um, and then I, I remember I was working for Bobby at the time because I, I had a very, very big, big, big job in menswear. But I gave it up when I met Bobby because we wanted to have time to travel. But then, you know, why waste my brain, as my father would say? Good so I went you. to work for him. So that's the way we traveled together. We worked together. It worked for a few years. And then I was like, done. I don't want to do it anymore. You know, I'm like, I, one day I just stopped coming into work. But that's all. <laughs> one day I stopped coming in. I'm like, I don't feel like I wonder if I could do that to Vin. If I could yeah, just stop coming in. I just stopped coming in. Well, you know what? I didn't really care what he thought. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't doing that much accountant but um i was doing more like the pr and 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 marketing and stuff like that but i remember getting google ads i don't know how much they are now but i remember paying like a dollar per keyword and right. i think i probably spent twenty thousand dollars or something on it and i said to bobby stop 
advertising in the yellow pages. So I wonder what ever happened to the yellow pages. Are they gone? Well, I'll tell you what's really funny is because I remember the same thing. And I have said often on the podcast, as everybody is, every, so many shows, we try and take apart SEO. And if you write a blog and then your SEO goes up so your clients can find you, and we take this apart on the show all the time. Oh, I want to and, hear Yeah. <laughs> and I, I actually have said many times on the show, I'm like, you guys just don't, re- don't, you have no idea how easy it used to be. We used to have our yellow page guy and our star ledger rep come in once a quarter. Okay, the the yellow page guy came in once a year and the star ledger rep came in once a quarter. And we'd be like, like you said, we'll take a dollar here. And we used to like, we'll take this town, this town, this town in the yellow pages. This one will just be a line item. This will be a whole business card side. And you would just, and guess what? Advertising was done for the year. Now we are on Instagram and Facebook and blogging and Pinterest trying to attract the client and bring them into us. It's a full-time job. Who has time to be a designer anymore? And you thought you're saving money because, you know, the yellow pages was actual paper and this is like air. Right. It costs a lot more money to have air than it is to have paper. And it's so much harder to track because when you, when somebody would call our showroom, we'd say, how did you hear about us? They'd say, the yellow pages. Now, when somebody calls the showroom, you say, how, do you, how did you hear about us? And they say, the internet. But you see, that's a big answer. It's like, well, the internet, what, right. what, what word did you Google? Did you Google window treatments? Did you Google window treatments in New Jersey? Did they you probably don't even know. Well, that's the thing. And so you're throwing all of this time, energy, and money you out know, into Google it. Google gives you very good analytics. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you have to go back that way and, and right. look at Google it. Right. Google exactly. will tell you how, what people are typing in to get to yeah. you. But anyway, yeah. it's just like a whole new world. And I remember I'm not involved in the business anymore, but, uh, yeah, thank God that Zaren's been around so long because the word of mouth is still yes. there. But the next generation, I don't know. I know. I don't know. It's 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 one of the challenges is to keep you know, reinventing yourself, staying relevant as a business, you know, and you have on one hand, the the tremendous gift of being a multi-generational or long living. Ours isn't multi-generational yet, but you know, actually, you know what, my daughter just started working for me on Monday. So guess what? We're multi-generational now. (laughs) We're now multi-generational. Does she want to be a designer? No, she's on the business end of it. Okay. Even better. Yeah, even better for me, believe me. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the thing is we have advantages of multi-generational long-lived businesses that other new businesses don't have. But then we also have the struggle of staying relevant and reinventing ourselves and not doing like... And like not you getting push, stuck in the muck. Right, and like where you push, Bobby, no more yellow pages. Do it this way, it you know? Probably, we probably wasted money for a couple of years doing both because you weren't sure when to cut. Absolutely. We probably both. I'm going to tell you what, 2018 is the first year that Window Works is not spending money on Yellow Pages adding. You waited till now. Right. Well, we went from, like you said, $30,000 a year to $10,000 to $5,000. And I think last year might have been $1,200. Yeah, yellow page it's ridiculous. Page? It's crazy. Did there you is. still get it at home? I, I sort of, we, so we all sat at the meeting when we were so deciding. Well, no, that's the thing. That's exactly what I said to my husband. That's I said, wait. big. We don't keep our own yellow pages. Who keeps it, you know? And no, um, if you need something, you go on Google. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. So, but I mean, I think we were down to like 12 or 1800 for the last year. And finally this year, he just looked at all of us. He's like, okay, uncle. All right, fine. I'm done. <laughs> but we were saying for a couple of years and not that, you know, not that we, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, I said, no more yellow pages. You're, you know, this is reason. I was just like, do we need it? Are you sure? And then it, there's certain things. If he thinks, yes, I go, okay, you're the smart one. Let's do it that way. You know what I mean? But he Keep finally this year. Keep the marriage yeah. together. Right. So let Whatever. us say yes. Please. Yeah. And because, and here was the other thing. Cause our high average um, ticket sale, our average sale is a relatively high number. It was almost like if you got one call a year, it completely paid for itself and more. That's so true. it was almost like whatever. But then this year he finally just went, okay, I'm done. I'm over it. You know, and by the way, they still have the one from last year. So don't worry about it. <laughs> exactly. It's not like they threw it out. Nobody throws it out. Right. The other grandchildren are sitting on it at the kitchen many, table. <laughs> right. How many yellow pages do you think? Because God forbid you threw one out. Right. Because you might have missed something. Right, right, right. It's the booster seat. Exactly. <laughs> so that's awesome. So anyway, so, but I did want to just um, acknowledge that because I'm sure my, my listeners are, the half a dozen people that I mentioned that we were interviewing, we're all just so excited that we were interviewing today. We're all so excited that you were coming and they all said, oh my goodness. Oh, that's you know. so sweet. Well, yeah, so you have a lot of love out there. Fabrics is still there yeah. it's on grand and um it's on it's on 
Allen. It's between Allen and Orchard. The entrance is no longer on Grand. It's now 69 Orchard, a number who could forget. <laughs> not, it's not a number anybody could forget. I actually <laughs> love the number. I'm like, 69 Orchard, are you kidding me? That's such a great number. Uh, Just keep so saying it over and over. Front, but that's, not, that's a deception because all it is is basically a lobby to get upstairs. And okay. Upstairs, it's like this 10,000 square foot mecca of it's amazing. Draping upholstery fabric, which you just can't, um, you know, we used to call it Zarin Fabric Warehouse. And I have mm-hmm. to say my number one mistake that if I could go back and redo it is we took out the word warehouse and we just made it Zarin Fabrics because we were trying to be high end. And because we were, we sell Madison Avenue. We you sell do. Park Avenue. I mean, that's our retail client. Of course, our wholesale client is the theater. We do a lot right. of theater, a lot of movies, obviously the decorating trade, right. uh, but we do have retail fancy customers and, I don't know. Like maybe it was ego. Maybe because I'm the high end fancy customer. I didn't want to be a warehouse. And this right. is ten years ago. I didn't want to be a warehouse. I didn't want right. to own a warehouse. I wanted to own Zarin Fabrics, right. home and design. And we went into um, furniture sell- selling furniture and accessories and all that. And ultimately, after going all the way around, as my husband would say, and losing a million dollars, going all the way around, you know, he let me do whatever I wanted. And you know, in, in hindsight, it was a mistake. Um, we should have kept it down fabric warehouse because honestly, that's who we are. And I'm trying to get my stepson to add it back because we're giving people the advantage of a warehouse price. Right. We're not even getting credit for it. Right. Wow, we're not even selling to someone looking for that because nobody knows. It's almost like you come to Zarin Fabrics because you heard that we have the best fabrics. And then when you find out that the silk mohair that should be $120 a yard or $195 a yard is only $69 a yard for the same thing because it's a closeout color that we happen to pick up and we bought all of it. All of it. We bought all the ugly colors, but they're not ugly to everyone. You know? Right. But, you know, all the... Yeah. They, they ran out of this the navy trend versus that navy this gray versus no no it could be the same gray they changed the name i mean really it's no i meant they were the colors ran out of the trend so it's the beautiful yeah, color but, but maybe the though, trend sometimes is sometimes it's just the end of grace of, of silver because right. now they have you know light gray because they're also trying to keep their business fresh and new so they're right. always selling new colors right they're not really new they're the same color with a different name i mean right. virtually you can't tell the difference so it, it really depends or you know you have a customer who wants a pop of orange well orange mohair is not the most popular color but guess who's got it you do. Right. um so my point is is that they come and they expect to spend 195 dollars a yard but they're going to get that orange they couldn't find anywhere else in stock today and right. they ended up spending 69 so it's like wow i can't believe how much money we <laughs> saved you didn't even know you were going to save money so i feel like we need to like tell people from the get-go not only is it first quality, best, best, we, we sell at closeout prices. We right. really do. Well, and your lesson in there is what we talk about also on the podcast, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, Jill, is that we talk about sticking to your company mission. You know, and it's funny because you said, like my husband said, after a year and a million dollars, we went back to what we did. My husband always says, stick to your company mission. So we had a similar experience about, oh my God, five or six years into business, I did exactly like you did. I was like, oh, we're window treatments. We should be furniture too. And we should be accessories too. And, you know, we could sell all this stuff. So off trotting into the New York gift show I go. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, and I'll take three of those and I'll take two of those and we'll sell these like crazy in our window work showroom. And I came back and my husband looked at me because you spent how much money? I'm like, it'll be fine because we're going to mark it up and everything. He's like, these are not window treatments. We sell window treatments and awnings. This is our company mission. And so I said to him, we good? Yeah. What's the matter? My assistant's talking to me. What's the matter? <laughs> oh, my, she's saying I cleaned it. She cleaned up the apartment for me. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Show it. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> for the distraction, but that was worth a distraction. Right. Thank you, Joanna. Right. So, but anyway, so the point is we had the exact same experience, Jill, because he, I, he, he, let, he would not have let anybody else spend money off of our company mission but he let me because he loves me and because you know same, uh, right. same story right that's what i'm saying and, and i'm, I'm here i mean i'm honest that's it that's what i I'm hope saying. it was a million dollars like we did but no ours was a lot less <laughs> but i will say uh, well it, it was bigger than that it wasn't just a million dollars in product because we also took over the bank and we took more retail so, space relative it's relative so we but had the lesson is the space. same well, right. We took all this retail space. It was a lot of it was rent. Right. So we had this humongous store, which, by the way, was on the Real Housewives. So, of course, hopefully that helped. But instead of filling it up with fabric, we, you know, did other things because we had the room. And God right. knows we had enough fabric upstairs, downstairs, right. and all right. over. And we're also, right. by the way, I don't know if people know this, we are the largest, or we are the only uh, drapery and upholstery supply 
company in New York City. In New York mm -hmm. City. Like the other one is Van Wick and they're over the bridge. Right. Um, not that it's anything wrong with being over the bridge, just they're not literally in the city. If you need a lot, <laughs> you're the like only the one. Curb. We're the only one custom. So if you need that round curved rod or this weird size, you can only come to us. We literally cut it on the spot and you're out the door. Oh, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to oh, tell you yeah. what. I all didn't realize that. Little pins and all those. Well, I'm I don't even know what they are. Upholstery supplies, drapery supplies, rods, custom. We, are spe we specialize in custom tracks. We specialize in the foam. We have all that foam filling up the downstairs. Everything. Okay, I'm going to remember that because I'm going to tell you what, we do a lot of work in Manhattan for some high-level luxury interior designers. And when we're on the job and, and we open up, something. yeah, we've forgotten something yep. or something hasn't been packaged, we're like, you know, you what are you doing? And so now I'm going to remember. Us and we'll put it in an Uber and send it to you. you know I mean? had no idea. I'm definitely going to remember that. That's awesome. Please do. Yeah, and, and again, we're wholesale. We're to the trade. I mean, right, 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 right. So that's perfect. And, um, so that's yeah. good. So that's, you know, that's a good lesson to hammer home there that you stick to your company mission. You don't veer away and, you know, you learn lessons though. And that's the other thing that we all do things in our businesses and we make mistakes and we come back and, you know, we, we move on. Better so that's pretty cool. Someone else's mistake. <laughs> it's you know? That's what it is. Listen to me and Jill. We both right. did so, it. We veered. Don't, we don't, lost don't, a lot of money. You don't have to break your arm to know what it feels like. Although my, <laughs> my mother always said, you know, Jill's got to break her arm to know what it feels like. She doesn't believe us, you know, how, if it hurts. And that's just an expression of an arm. But really, I always had to do things on my own. I didn't believe anyone. I remember I was in Filene's training program when I graduated college. I majored in retail management. I went to Filene's and it was the only program in the country that had a retail management. I don't even think there is one anymore anywhere. I think one school has like a specific mm -hmm. retail major. Now they're okay. all um, in vel underneath business, right, you know, right, right, right. Business program, and then you can get retail. Anyway, but I remember the Macy's training program was loaded with exec uh, presidents, owners of the humongous companies that are retail companies, children, because they would say, "I want them to learn on Macy's money, right?" And then they can come work for me. <laughs> Let him, let him make a million dollar mistake with Macy's, not me. Right. Exactly right. Right. <laughs> it's so true. It's, it's so, so true. true. So, okay. So tell us a little bit more. Now you have the rug line, but I understand that you have had other products that you designed along the way and the learning curve. Cause you, you shared with me off air that this is the home run for you, that it feels right. It is right. The price. Right. I feel like it's all right. Um, lesson learned. Okay. So I had a line, um, pretty much a lot of things came to me. I didn't seek them out. Some things I did seek out. I've done a lot of different things. I wrote a book secrets of a Jewish mother, which was a home run. I, I did with my mother and my sister, even if I didn't sell a book, it was a home run yeah. because I got to do it. Somebody's at the door. It's a very busy house. I work at home, by the way. This is my, uh, my art collection behind me, my Hirschfeld. I mean, I collected over 100 Hirschfelds. Really? That was like our thing together. Because when I was just, I can go off on a million tangents. Because when I was a little, that's my pink fairy, by the way. When I was a little girl, I used to read, my parents always read the Times. Very educated family. And they always read the Times on Sunday. They still do. We're probably one of the few houses that still get it delivered. And my mother and sister would always do the crossword puzzle. I didn't. Not that smart. <laughs> I'm um, the what I did is I, I would count all I would do. They would read do the crossword puzzle until you could finish it faster. Yeah. And I would count the Ninas in the Hirschfeld, which was on the cover of the arts and leisure section. So Al Hirschfeld, if anybody knows, um, who's over 50. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this one, well, they don't have them numbered because they're originals. Well, some of them are originals. But if you look at any of them, like here in his hair, it's Nina. And uh -huh. what I would do is I would count the Ninas that are hidden, which was Hirschfeld's daughter. Uh -huh. um, some, and then he would write the number three, like here, um, or five. So you knew how many you were looking for. And it was like oh. game. every Sunday I would look forward to, to the, um, and then he, you know, he got older. He was probably about I don't know, 95 when he stopped. I mean, he died at like 99. He lived mm -hmm. a long time, long, mm -hmm. long, good life. I was actually at his apartment. I went to his townhouse. It was a really cool experience. But... I just loved it. It was like a childhood thing. And I said to Bobby, I want to collect them. And so my, what I did is I've got these all framed up um, in the same size. So it looks really good. I actually yes. have a decorator who helps me because, you know, the shoemaker has no shoes, right? Right, 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 right? I don't trust my own taste. I always have to have somebody help me, but I can tell you what to do. Right. No problem. <laughs> Believe me, we're all that way. We all are all that way. I've had that conversation a dozen times with interior designers and even me. I'm, you know, look, I'm designing window treatments 36 years. I'll be sitting there and I'll be like, Kim, what do you think I should do? Right, exactly. <laughs> no, no, it's true. So I, I, I don't trust my own taste for me. Um, that's my own insecurity. But back 
to the question of um, lessons what, what learned on designing things, things along the way. So one of them was I had a bedding line, um, uh, bedding meaning like the pillowcases, the, uh, not the sheets, but the top of bed. So like Comforters the, the and comforter um, and the, um, you know, the shams, shams and all the, and all the, and pillows. And the pillows. And I did it for Bed Bath & Beyond. I had an exclusive deal with them and it was like a test and I was in like a hundred stores or 200, I don't remember how many stores. But what happened was, is my, my partner, um, an expert in the business at, I have taste here and, and, and the customer I'm selling is, is, is more middle, right? I like the white with the trim, you know, neat, kind of like fret or, uh, you know, matuk and all that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they're showing me very printed, loud, you know, crazy colors like purple and brown. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, these guys know their business, you know, they know that price point. I mean, I think it was like $199 for an eight piece set. Or right. The bed in the bag. Ridiculous. Thing. It was bed in the bag, but even nicer because I sold the pillow separate. So I've got mm -hmm. maybe six pieces in it. And so anyway, so we did four different sets, gorgeous packaging, great everything. I didn't love the patterns. When I saw them, I didn't love them. And, and they gave me approval. You know, they said, listen, if you don't love it, will we do it? I'll go, listen, you know what? You, I got to plug in my computer. You guys are the experts, right? I got to trust you. You know, you do this 24 seven. I don't, I know my own taste. I know what I like and I don't like, but I'm going to trust you guys that if you say that this is good, let's go. And if Bed Bath & Beyond buyers buy it, then they know what they're doing, right? Everybody knows what they're doing, but my gut. I, you know what I just wrote down here? Can I, it's not going to come up, but you I just wrote gut? down here gut check because I'm like, I'm, I'm saying when she's done you talking, I'm going to say, and here's the lesson also that we always talk about on the podcast. You know in your gut you when something's And I haven't wrong. heard your podcast, which I will start listening to, by the way. <laughs> we are like this. <laughs> oh, totally. So my gut said no, but my mouth said approved. And guess what? Bombed. We didn't, make it. Yeah. It didn't bomb. No. Okay. But we didn't make... We had to do a certain amount of dollars per square foot. Okay. We were off about 10%. It wasn't really, to be honest. It's so not so bad. One yeah. pattern, the purple one, that's why I remember the purple. The purple outsold them all. I never would have done that. Okay. Purple. Right. right. You know? Mm -hmm. And it was loud. Like I said, I could show them to you. Um, they were loud. Yeah. Very, no white in it. No white. All. Uh, what year colors. was this? What year was this? Eight years ago. Okay. Yeah. Seven so, years ago. Yeah, not 20. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was after the show started. So I left, I went on the show 10 years ago. So it was a few years after that. Okay. I think I was maybe still on the show. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. uh, being on the show didn't really matter. That was interesting. Being on the show helped me get famous. Yes. And that's why they did Jill Zarin bedding and not Zarin fabrics bedding. Right, I think, right, right. I believe that I would have had Zarin fabrics bedding had I wanted to go that route. No problem mm -hmm. because of our history. Anyway, right. it didn't work, blah, blah, blah. And I go into the stores now, Bed Bath & Beyond, seven years later. Everything and is what right do they have English. out? <laughs> but I wanted the white and the white with the trim. And had I gone with what I wanted. You would have been a trendsetter. Business, they may have said, we don't want white from Jill Zarin. Right. They might not covered. have. We want, you know, pattern. But I could have done like more easy, neutral patterns, like very restoration hardware kind of. Right. Thing. The um, point is that you, you know, the lesson in there is that you had a feeling and and i have to say that's a tough place to be in because when you say they're the experts i listen to them you know there is a fine line i mean there's nothing worse each of us has an expertise the designers listening have an expertise there's nothing worse as a designer when you are expressing to a potential client or to yes. your client a solution and they're telling you it's wrong so there is a place and a time to be respectful of the person's expertise that you are engaged with and go along but i always say not when you've got that gut check feeling when you you're if you really don't know you don't care you're not emotionally attached to it and the expert says do something and it sounds like a logical reasonable thing to do yeah let's do it well, but that's if why i did gut, that because i wasn't personally attached it wasn't my home but your gut was in there saying but my gut was saying it's not right i don't I'm like let the experts go right so, and, I, and by the way and and i don't remember which came first but then i also had a jewelry line okay, okay? the first line did phenomenal it was all my personal jewelry recreated or interpreted into a non-real line of jewelry right right so you, um, it was, you, it was, you, it was your curated taste like as things that you would but purchase it was my, your... i literally took out everything i have in my jewelry of what right. i love and they either tried to copy it or, or interpret it i was involved in every piece 
and we sold it into Macy's, Lord and Taylor, and the Bonton. Wow. Home run, right? It did fantastic. Season two, my partner, I was busy doing whatever I'm doing. And um, my manufacturer, because it was a license, these are all licenses, I didn't own them. Mm -hmm. um, but I obviously have to approve everything. Well, I'm supposed to approve everything. They des I didn't realize the timing, you know, like time is ticking away. And all of a sudden, one day I wake up, I'm like, what happened to my next season? Where's my samples? I haven't seen anything, blah, blah, blah. And so I didn't have it on the calendar, which I should have. I should have had it on a calendar. This date is due and this, I didn't calendar it out, which I do normally. Because I do it normally in my own business, but I wasn't doing it for them. Okay. I assumed that they would contact me when I needed to see things for approval. The next thing I know, the goods are in the stores. They never got my approval. It was put your name on it. Not my name all over it. It was not what I would have approved. Let's just leave it at that. It certainly wasn't my inspiration. Um, and I always, you know, just living my life, I was always cutting things out in magazines saying, you know what, those earrings, those will be good for the line. You know, that color, that'll be a good thing to do. Just cutting. I always had, a, I always do that. I do that in my own house. Even if I'm not decorating, I'm always tearing things, you mm -hmm. know, which is what I tell customers to do. I tell clients to do cut out things that you like right. so I can see. You know, it's kind of like, who's your celebrity crush? And then I know who you want to date, you know, right, right, right. what you like in, 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 the, in the magazines and I'll kind of know what your taste is. So I would do that with jewelry. They put it in the stores, bombed out, thrown out. I didn't get a second chance or, you know, I had first line did phenomenal. Second line, bad out. They, I'm like, wait, 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 you know, let me do it again. No, I mean, that's just the way it is. So it wasn't meant to be, it was fine. Um, the but rug, that was also a combination of their misstep of, of, Oh, my, my, my partner. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my rugs, I have the right partner. They are the largest online retailer, esalerugs.com. Mm -hmm. Um, they're the, it's a family business. I love that. They were Iranian. Um, the father started it. Basically he was like a rug salesman, you know, mm -hmm. rug salesman. And then he grew and he left Iran and he went and he sourced and he did. And he had very expensive rugs for $10,000 rugs. And then he started to get into the affordable rug business. And they are literally the largest online retailer. They were never really to the, um, in retail stores. That's mm -hmm. not their business model. It was literally to the customer. Um, and they're made, uh, you know, in Turkey. And I said, I want to go check the, <laughs> I want to go check the factory. And they said, we would love to have you. It's 50 miles from the Syrian border. I said, well, maybe in a few years. <laughs> that might be a case of. You I'm probably are running it just fine. It's, I'm, I'm sure, sure it's fine. fine. I have no problem. <laughs> but um, the price points are beyond ridiculous. I mean, mm. it costs more money to ship them here, you know, than to make them. It's ridiculous. The prices started $69 for a runner. And the most expensive, like nine by 12, I think is like $5.99. Um, inspired kind of things like restoration hardware, William Sonoma, that kind of very, like you could see my house is very content. Now I'm going with what I like. Yes. Now you're and listening to your gut. Well, I'm okay with it. That's right. That's right. Because it's what it you, yep. it's my fault now. Right, I'm, on right. the line. I don't, right. I'm not going to blame someone else and say, well, I picked their designs because they picked it, which is a really bad excuse, by the way. Well, but I mean, it's Should a learning lesson, but it's a learning lesson. And that's exactly the point. We all have those moments and we, we all don't always make the right decision every single time. You know, all just, I can tell you, you is can make the wrong decision once. My rugs, everyone has seen my rugs and I've sent them to housewives who are very honest. They don't, I don't care if it's free and they were sent to them free they would not post or say what they've said about them if they didn't believe it. Right. Um, I had, I do, you know, you mentioned I do this event, this luxury. Yeah, I wanted to talk about luxury, that too. I, well, I do this luxury. Ladies part, luncheon. Well, it was ladies. Now oh, anybody now can come. Like, so it's like a luxury luncheon. It started okay. out for ladies and a gifting suite. Now it's grown into this big thing. And I, I started raising money for Bobby's cancer and I will continue to for the International Thyroid Oncology Group. I was going to skip this year. I was going to take a year off and I've been really, I'm, I'm doing it. I think Bobby would want me to do it and not skip it. Mm -hmm. I don't have my house anymore. We gave that up. So I'm going to be doing it at Topping Rose, which is like the fancy hotel in the Hamptons. And we're going to take over the whole hotel. I won't be able to have as many people, but they're going to pay more money to come. That's all. It's just now tell me, you said, I read that you said that it's like the Shark Tank 
um, f- out on the hand. You know, I didn't say that. Someone else said that. Which oh, is very complimentary, by the way. Okay. I never, I never saw it that way, but I guess it really is. So but tell how- me about the concept. So how is it that it is a, a mecca for entrepreneurs? What does the luncheon do? I mean, I understand it's for a charity, but what is that okay, component of entrepreneurship? Started, it's a little compl- but let me just go finish the rugs and then I'll go back. To okay. That. My point was, is I laid out all the rugs at my party last summer, oh. all around the pool, all over the place. And people like, can we buy them right now? Wow. I'm like, no, these are just my samples. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and what's great about them is, and I'll show them to my apartment is, so um, you won't believe the prices and you, uh, they are pet proof. I mean, I don't like to say I can guarantee it. I can't guarantee anything. Right, right. But I can tell We're you not coming to knock on your that I have a designer apartment. brand rug for $5,000 <laughs> in my bedroom that's full of wee-wee pee-pee stains, which I'm happy to show you when we walk in and won't come out because it's very expensive wool. And wool. It's been tossed out as, we, as soon as my rug comes. My rug's the dog pee all over. And it, it, it's because it's synthetic, you know, it's like, it feels, you know that new uh, fabric that everybody's wearing, bamboo? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That bamboo, silky, right. whatever. And you're like, and it's cheap stuff, but it feels so good. So what's wrong with that? Who cares what bamboo is? I don't know what bamboo is. Well, my rugs aren't bamboo, <laughs> but the concept is that they feel like bamboo. They feel like silk. They're made of synthetic, whatever. I don't know, polypropamine. I don't know what it is. And it doesn't absorb water. The, the, the nature of the fabric is it's hydrophobic. It does not absorb water. So anything that pours urine or anything like that... It pills right up. All you that. just yeah. pat it down. No stain. No nothing. Right. My wool rugs, on the other hand, love water. <laughs> so does silk. Silk loves wine. It holds wine. on to it forever. Yes. So it it loves wine. It's like silk. us. You can't hold it against it. Drop dead. And they come with padding. I mean, they're $69. So I would tell people, you know, I always say, you know, change your pillows out every season. Give your house a facelift. Paint the room. $300 you can paint a room, a few, actually probably more money for pillows, $500 to change your pillows, <laughs> but for $300 you can change the whole floor. Yeah. And I think changing the floor and the fabrics, you know, is the number freshen one way to update up. a room to freshen it up. Yeah and, yeah. and I was telling you this before and it's so true. I never really thought about it, but nobody ever clean. You walk on your carpet with your shoes and you dirty everything. Your dogs are all over it. Yeah. You walk around barefoot after it. Everyone walks around barefoot except my husband, by the way. My husband always wore slippers. Bobby <laughs> Zarin's feet never touched the ground. <laughs> and he always washed his hands. He's very clean, very neat, mm-hmm. very manicured and he never walked barefoot but i on the other one most people walk barefoot on their rugs right. when was the last time you cleaned your rug i know you clean your you wash your towels you took you washed your body you're completely clean you dry right. yourself with a clean towel that's not dirty because you just cleaned yourself but yet you wash it after right, right and right. your rugs you never wash right. so i say toss some and just buy new rugs every six months because right. they're so affordable <laughs> why should you even walk on all these things it's cheaper to replace it than clean it yeah. i got a bill for like two thousand dollars to clean my rugs the last mm. time i did it i'm never doing it again <laughs> throwing them out i'm not throwing Let them out them them away Donate them. I don't want to be right. Exactly. Exactly. There are great places to donate them. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Oh man. So, so it's uh, the rug line is it just launched. We're, we're in the spring of 2018 and it just launched in the fall of 2017. It, it, It really just launched in December. Okay. And we made our sales figures as if it was six months. It hit the ground running with no press. I wasn't talking because I was dealing yeah, with my involved. husband being sick and I was not. And it was a bad timing. You know what I mean? I couldn't. Yeah. And by the way, my, my partner, instead of having a launch party and spending whatever 20 grand doing it, they made a donation to Bobby's charity instead. How nice is that? That is you know, nice. Such a great partner. They're so nice. They're so classy. Um, Hemisha people, I'd like to say, you know, family, and they oh, totally get me. That's um, nice. I, I, I couldn't pick a better, better partner. And they, you know, they've, they ship within a day. Wow. A day. They pack, pull, ship, and they, and I think it's like free shipping. Go on the website. They just had a promotion and free shipping. It's crazy. Yeah. And the rugs are beautiful too. I love you have the uptown line and the downtown line. The uptown right. line has seven collections in or seven designs in it. And the downtown has nine designs. The downtown line um, really is like artwork. It is. Really? It's like so. Very, it's like yeah. So it's like, I think of Fields. You remember Edward Fields rugs? Yes. Yes. You know? yes and that's yes. what inspired me really. Cause I remembered as a kid and I remember, oh my God, I can't afford that. That's a $20,000 rug. It's a piece of art and you're not supposed to walk in the living room anyway. Do you, yeah. you grew up in a living room, you want a lot of walking? <laughs> I grew up in a house, not plastic. Thank God my mother had plastic. We had the plastic on ours. Oh my God. She <laughs> 
my mother-in-law, uh, Bobby's mother had plastic. Yeah. Uh, when she passed, we were peeling the plastic off. It was like yellow plastic. <laughs> the fabric held up. That's right, fabric. And no one I remember my mother, thrown out. the only furniture she ever bought her entire life was living room furniture when we got a house for the first like the first real house that my mom and dad had gotten and so she went out to the local uh, furniture store in the small town that we lived in and she bought white crush velvet sofas the oh. seats were white crush oh. velvet and the backs were like black pattern with beige and bronze and white and of course that's completely even if you know even if you even thought that this should be ever be out in the world it should be a reverse the seat should be the pattern right but it was like it's a think back on it it was so funny because she didn't come for money. She didn't know for money. That was the only thing she ever bought. And she, you could, looking back, I can see how that she went out and got it and thought, these are beautiful. And so she immediately called the guy to have them covered in plastic. And so- <laughs> uh, there you go. And guess what? Now she can pass them down to you and you have brand new, white, ridiculous furniture. Right? Exactly. It actually probably looks good now. I mean, two kids that are eight years old, you know, and let's get white crushed velvet. Okay, sounds like a plan. <laughs> Crazy. I, my mother had Zajac and Callahan. Do you know oh, who they are? Oh, I've heard of them. They were like, I think she got their name out of like Architectural Digest. And I remember she told me it was $25,000, which was all the money they had. We're talking about like 1975. Yeah. yeah. And not all the money they had, but all the money oh, they had to spend yeah. you know, decorating. And, and, you know, compare that to today. That's like spending $100,000 on that's a room right. or more, you know. Right. Um, but I have to say my mother still has some of those pieces. They, and they custom classic. mirrors at the time. She still has them all. And they look good today. Yeah. Well, classic so design. Really get a good, yeah, they were, they were amazing. But um, we weren't allowed in the room. That's why I laugh about the, the rugs. You know, you weren't allowed to walk in the room, sit in the room, except for the Jewish holidays, you know. Yeah. <laughs> can't imagine having a life like that now. You're not allowed to sit in a room. I know, right? You just can't even, you can't fathom it. It's the truth. No. So tell me about designing the rugs, Jill. Is it, a, this is a, a process that you sat down and, you know, worked with the people in order to come up with the patterns and the designs? How does I that- I didn't get that technical. I told them like the look I wanted. Okay. Um, I sent them magazine uh, uh, things. I worked with color. And what's okay. so nice is that at the end of the sample, which is so great, when as for designers, for all of you, by the way, if you have, if you have a lot of customers who are going to buy, we can ship you a set of samples. Samples. Oh, yeah, corners. Squares, nice. Corners. And what's so nice, and you know this, that it has all the colors of the weave and the end. Right, right, so right. So nice. Right. So you can really see the color matching and things like that. It's just so great. So it's very Soho. Think of Soho. Splashes yeah. of paint. So yeah. you'll see, it's online. Everything's online I saw right they're now. beautiful. Everybody um, has. I'll put pictures up on our Instagram that thank day. Thank you. Too. No, I'm, yeah. it's beyond exciting. On my own Instagram, I just uh, posted my house from Florida, which I think I spent $25,000 decorating the entire house. Yeah. I went to City Furniture. Oh, I'm not going to put all of you out of business. Sorry to tell you this, but <laughs> um, I went to City for, Listen, it's stuff that I'm not going to spend a lot of money on. I don't live there more than a month and it's Florida. You know, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't going to invest in it. Right. In New York, I spent $25,000 on a piece. Right, 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 right. You know, I just bought a chair, Minolta, 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 chair, whatever, it was like $9,000, crazy. I bought, here, look at this lamp, you know, you could buy it, you know, a copy of it for like $100, and I'm spending like $4,000. <laughs> that's New York, because that's, you know, New York designer, designer loves you. Florida, $25,000, city furniture, and they ship that day. Yeah, and right. Warehouse, they ship that day. You go oh in in the morning, you have it like the next day or whatever. <laughs> um, and all my rugs are in it. And I just got my new rugs. I changed out the rugs and I just put in the new collection so um, people can see kind of what it looks like. That's awesome. Yeah. So you want to take us and show us in your apartment now some of the sure. rugs that you have? I've seen it. So it's, uh, yeah. I've actually seen my apartment. We're going to get a little gonna... tour now. Yeah, it's not 100% finished. Okay. Um, we don't care. We don't like design junkies. We're going to see it. <laughs> finished so i haven't had it professionally photographed yet okay we're getting, we're getting closer don't mind the mess because i wasn't planning on doing a tour okay you've so, been a great sport you didn't know we were doing video we're and you said video. okay, okay so here's and now you're doing this um i used room and board um for the furniture these are my rugs and if i get down loop, and this is from your collection there. did i just lose you no nope, oh. we're here we're what here uh, it just sounds Actually, like you... I lost my own. Oh, there yeah. we are. Are you good? I can hear you, but okay, we're there? getting echo now. Sorry yeah. about that. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. We're not good. There's a setting that changed. And... 
Are we good? Now we're good. Now we're okay. Good. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, anyway, if I get down low on the carpet. So this is one of the rugs in your collection. Yes. So Gorgeous. it's got a little bit of cream in it. So it's, yeah. it looks solid, but it's not. I mean, it's got a sheen to it too. It's nice. It's really, it, I told you they look like silk. And then yeah. that, that's my art. Um, bathrooms, I use DXV, mm -hmm. um, which is the high end of American standard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely phenomenal appliances. And I did their, their toilets. Every Very single nice. one. I got to tell you, for so many reasons, everyone should have that toilet. That's all really? I have to say. <laughs> for so many uses. Um, and, you know, everything matches and it was great. And I used, um, who do I use? I love this. I love this cabinet mirror. And in fact, you know, a lot of the stuff, my friends come over and they like what I do. So then they go and buy it because uh, it has the pop out mirror. Oh, that's fun. I like okay. that too. I love right. that. So yeah. like these little things. Because the old eyeballs, they need to be able to see the, the eyeballs yeah. that you're putting the makeup on. And they're only $400, <laughs> those cabinets. Okay, here's my living room. Um, restoration oh, hardware beautiful. sofa, but I use silk mohair, of course. Yeah. And then the matching carpet from my bedroom. Gorgeous. Um, these chairs were custom made because I wanted to do polar fleece fabric from my store. Because I had it in red, but I ordered it in white. It feels like a teddy bear. You see this? Oh, yeah. Texture oh, it's gorgeous. See that? Feels like yes. a teddy bear. So my designer came up with this. Um, Jean Rigere had this, these chairs, these polar bear chairs. So she copied them for me, custom made them in California. It took forever. But they finally came, and they're phenomenal, and they're so comfortable. <laughs> so I love those. Then some of these pillows came from Zarin. Um, this was a custom piece also behind me. This is made of tile. I don't know if you can see it. But um, I forgot the name of the company that made it. But you see. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, see my it? goodness. Yeah, it's beautiful. Phenomenal. And, you know, our and your was, designer um, designed the piece and the, the storage in it. And the, yes, yes. Um, Are Joanna we going to give Darling, a shout out to your designer? Yeah, yeah. No, I was okay. just saying, Joanna Darling, who um, happens to be married to Ron Darling, a real hottie, New York Met. Anyway, <laughs> but she's completely, unbelievably talented and um, became a really good friend through it. Oh. That was great. And then Domingo Zapato gave me that as a gift, that beautiful piece of art. He's a very famous designer. And then, you know, the lamps, flowers and all that, courtesy of Joanna, who's always bringing me fresh flowers. She happens to live in the building. Oh. Um, this table, I love. Let me tell you why I love this table. It doesn't, like glass. I always had glass tables, but they're always dirty. Right. They always get scratched. Right. And I wanted something that wouldn't. Right. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't expand. But I just, a friend of mine just found a table. I don't know the name of the store that is a rectangle and when you turn it it expands and pops up in the middle oh I yeah know, it's the craziest thing expandable table i ever saw I, i'm obsessed with it i just don't know where she bought it um and then i got this at some cool i don't know if you can see my fiction yes. yep cool store downtown we got that and then my kitchen which i love first of all i love samsung appliances you know they wanted to give me whatever, I don't know if you can see me, sorry. They there wanted you. me to get, I mean, this is what all decorators do, right? You know, you want to get the Thermador, you want to get the Viking, you want to get the Sub-Zero and they're $10,000 and you have rich customers, it doesn't matter. Samsung, <laughs> I wanted the one where I could look at, I could, when I'm in bed, I have Samsung TVs. When I'm in bed, if somebody leaves that refrigerator open, which is probably me because I just went and got water, I get a thing on my TV that says your refrigerator is open and it's- kidding me where on, on my phone i get an alert so i'm in florida and i call someone who's in my apartment i said you know you left the refrigerator open <laughs> and, it like, um, and it tells you everything that it has in it so it's got i have it hooked up to my telephone so on this i could actually see well i can play music anyway i don't have to sell samsung appliances but <laughs> it actually plays music and everything okay let's talk oh about God. does it make the food because then i'm like i'm in i want one <laughs> oh, no, it so I got, I, I have, it doesn't matter what brand I got, but I have an oven that um, is induction. Okay. I'm all about induction, people. I have I had gas the induction in the building, oven. and I know yeah. you're all crazy that I pulled out my gas. Induction boils water in one minute. Wow. That's, and if you have children, which I don't have, I don't happen to have children at home, the um, top doesn't get hot. Okay. No one's going to burn themselves, which wow. is kind of a nice feature. So you don't get hot uh, and you have, food, and you can really control the heat just as well as you can with gas. I had famous chefs cooking in my house. I had Chef Roble here. I had Adam C. Banks here. And, and, and I thought they were going to yell at me for getting rid of my gas. Mm -hmm. And they both said, you know what? We like it. Oh. But you have to get all new pots and pans because I found out that you have to have special induction pans. <laughs> and it took me, <laughs> oh, like three days to realize why my, my oven wasn't working. I couldn't get anything to cook. And I found out you had a 
Oh my God, you're so funny. Lesson learned. Okay. You're too funny. And then again, um, I did a whole new, you don't know what it looked like before, but I had a whole new custom white kitchen. I took down the walls. I opened it up. There was a wall here in this space. I took that down. Um, And then my foyer, um, two large mirrors, I guess you can see. And then this gorgeous bench. Look at these legs. Oh, look at it. Whoa. Like a ballet point. Beautiful. that That was another 10 grand. (laughs) <laughs> oh, she's got such good taste. <laughs> How good taste costs me a lot of money. Right. As soon as she shows it to you, you're like, okay, I have to have it. Uh-oh, we lost her. Uh, oh, there you are. Okay. You're probably so getting my... away from your internet. Oh. I don't know if you can see it. So what she did, can you see that? So she put my bed into the window. Love... It used to be on this wall. My bed used to be here. Oh. Um, and I love it. I love sleeping with the shade behind me and I could turn around and I have a, ele- obviously I have electric drapes everywhere. Right. Um, right, right and I have right. these gorgeous, you know, oatmeal colored, gorgeous things. But by the way, so here's the stain. I just want to show you what okay. my dog did. Okay. See this? Can you see it? Oh yeah. Is that chicken did that? Is that the one that did that? Oh, we lost your sound. You turned your sound off. She turned her sound off. There you go. There's a mute button. Got it. There Got you go. It? Yeah. That's, right. That's okay. Um, bathroom. <laughs> I put a TV in the bathroom. We don't have a big production TV with doing us with this. We're just trying to wing it our own, just the two of us here. So. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I know, my big production crew. And yeah. then I did again with all the DXV and the toilet. And the I toilet. Love. And the toilet. And my beautiful, oh, and the, and the stone. Mm. I got to get you the name of the stone. The stone is so beautiful. Oh, um. I can't even tell you. I also, I love, I did all the closets from, um, you're going to laugh. I ripped out all my custom closets that I had bought at the closet store or whatever it's called because I didn't like that heavy look. Uh-huh. So I went to the container store Uh-oh. and I like the elf system guys. Don't look at the messy closet, but um, uh-huh. I love the elf because I love the drawers. I love the slide out. And that's something. I, that. I love the slide yes, out. Yes, yes. I like the baskets. I do. Yeah. I don't like the closed drawers. I like baskets now. You know, I don't know. It's just my taste change. Yeah. And I did the whole house, all the closets for like $8,000 installed. Wow. So I probably spent thirty when right. I did it originally. Right. So, but trust me, you know, whatever I saved, I spent somewhere else. <laughs> Ridiculous. And a lot of construction, a lot of things you don't see. I took yes. down walls. Um, I ripped out wall units. The demolition cost a fortune because I was ripping out everything I built. I had put in coffered <laughs> ceilings. I built in $100,000 with the custom built-ins. All gone, ripped out. Oh my God, you're a nut. You're a... <laughs> I, I should have stopped for another problem. But I'm happy. I am. I'm happy. Well, like you said, this one was close to the hospital and you wanted to be yes, there. Yes, I was yeah. seven blocks. I am seven blocks from, from uh, Sloan Kettering. Mm-hmm. And I was able to literally, you know, and when the ho- ambulance came, which was like 10 times, it was mm-hmm. very, very close. And we were, you know, it's just, it was, it was the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, and I'm not making any changes as far as my real estate. I want to ha- have a house in Florida. I have an apartment in Miami. I have this. I'm not making any changes for a year. My father told me, you're not allowed to do That's anything. Right. right. It's true. It's good advice. Food. It's so. good advice. It's good advice. You know, you're going to go through a lot this coming year. It's going yeah. to hit you in waves and at the times that you least expect it. Oh, you know, it's so funny. Us Weekly is calling me. God knows what they want. Um, <laughs> I can't, I can't, I'm not answering. Well, I, I can we... double when I talk to them. Um, <laughs> I, do. I don't know why they want to talk to me. I'm not even on TV anymore. Crazy. Oh man. I have to tell you, I really, 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 really enjoyed getting to know you. I oh, you're you're just, so you're a piece of work. I think. So what is the name of your podcast? Cause I'm seriously going to start following it. Okay. It's called a well-designed business. Okay. I'm going to do it right now. And is it once a week? It's actually twice a week for the first two years. I was three times a week. And now, oh. yeah. So when you go to find it, you're going to find over 300 shows in the library. No, no, what's it called? A well, a, a well designed business yeah um what happened i saw it a well-designed business here we go it's well dash designed yes 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 yes. yep yep um and how do i say subscribe so you're on the podcast app it should be right there on the icon right on the right side there it should be say subscribe doesn't say subscribe it says nothing about subscribing actually 
Not weird. Clicked on the oh, here it is. I got it. I got it. I got it. Subscribe. Here we go. I'm in. Okay, good. Oh, I'm so excited to see. I'm not going to um, also send this to my stepson to start listening. Oh, good, 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 good. The truth is, well, and the thing is that, you know, I always say to everybody, you could substitute the word interior design for whatever business you run because business good business is good business and good business principles are good business principles so it helps if you're interested in interior design because it makes the time go and you, you understand the concepts that directly relate to you oh i know before i let you go i do want to know a little bit about that luxury luncheon and let's talk about okay. that a little bit to give so you my some luxury luncheon this year is going to be at Topping Rose, very fancy, the, like the nicest hotel. It's in Bridgehampton, which is in the center of the universe of the Hamptons, which is good, so people can come from all over. I was just in Bridgehampton Monday. Oh, you were? You have a Measuring two there? projects, yeah. Oh, my God, what a schlep from Jersey. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, sure I sidetracked you. Because sure it's, yeah. oh, it's like trying on Jade, and then you have to go out there and fix something and whatever. By the way, you know, you should definitely speak to us if we can ever help you out. I, you know, I will. We, we also go out there a lot, so, you know, we can help each other. I'm sure. Oh, good, good, good. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I got to plug this in so I don't lose you. Uh, so my, my luxury luncheon, the concept is I want to raise as much money as I can for my charity. But at the same time, I want to give my friends, it started out as my friends and now it's not all my friends, the best gift bags they've ever had in their life. It started out where I got, when I got famous, I started getting invited to gifting suites and, cus- and brands were just sending me stuff and they still do. I get free stuff all the time. And I felt a little guilty. Like my friends, I would go to a gifting suite and they would give me something. And then I'd say, well, can you give my friends something? And they'd be, sometimes they'd say yes. And sometimes they'd say, no, we can only have enough for you. Um, and I felt a little guilty. So I said, why don't I do like, you know, like my own gifting suite, because I love swag. That's how it started out, kind of the concept, and it's grown from there. So basically what happens is a lot of companies who want to get their product into whose hands, who are these people? So it's socialites, very wealthy, the high net worth individual, and also celebrities. So I have about 30 or 40 celebrities. Christy Brinkley's come. Um, you know, Andrea Canning from Dateline NBC, obviously loads of housewives, the guy from Breaking Bad. You never know. And by the way, I didn't invite him. He got brought by someone else. So you just never know who's going to show up. <laughs> I mean, I, I had Jonathan Cheban is a friend of mine from the Kardashians. Like, you never know who's going to be there. It depends on who's in town that weekend. Right. That's the other thing. Who's in and town? And they know it's the hottest. T- I mean, if you type in like best party in the Hamptons, everyone knows like the because I give away so much stuff. So uh-huh. last year, I probably gave away a million dollars worth of free stuff. This year, it's going to be like $2 million. I think I'm going to oh. hit $2 million. Because the bag alone, I'll show you the bag I gave last year. Hold on. I'm going to show you. because I just Is it the gold one? one? Yes, you know yeah. the gold bag. Yeah, um, show it to I us. I only have one left. Hold oh on. I only, have one le- I only have one for myself left. Could you believe it? <laughs> I gave it all away. I'm so pissed. And I had a silver one. I don't know where that one went. Okay. So, <laughs> so she's coming. She's this good to get her bag. bag. Yeah. Follow and- uh-oh, my internet is going. It has everything. Seriously, Heather McDonald came to visit me in Miami last week, and she bought the gold bag because she knew I love it. And then she put the dog in it. It was so cute. She put the chicken in it. I have chicken. So, so Wait, um, hold the bag up again for a second because my internet went out. Anyway, the bags alone are worth 250 Wait, hold the bag up again for a oh, second. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. This is the bag. Yeah. Woo! That's pretty hot. <laughs> okay. So I made that like the golden ticket. That was the gold bag. I don't know what this year's going to be because they only made them for me last year. So I don't know if they're going to make that again or something else. But they're $250 retails. And you couldn't even buy that at retail, which became a whole thing because people were looking for that bag. They couldn't buy it on their website. They only made it for me. And then I had a silver bag. So I had a gold ticket level, a silver ticket level. It's $1,000 for gold, 500 for silver. But you go to so many events and you walk out of the gift bag, you get a magazine, a bottle of water, and a tampon. I don't know. You get something ridiculous, right? <laughs> that you don't need. Um, although you probably you might need a tampon. I don't need a tampon. Anymore. But um, well, maybe I still do. I don't know. <laughs> now I got on the tampon conversation. But um, you get nothing, basically, for your $500,000, $5,000 donation. I want you to get more than you paid for because that's just the way I am. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, 
Luann and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at LuannNigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.